Mathy Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 2.1, number 53, and this asked us to find the x-intercepts using our calculator, and I'm, I'm going to flip to my calculator in a little bit and show you how to do that, but I also just want to show you how to do this by hand, because this function, while it might look funky, this might look weird, this is just a line. So let's see if we can realize or recognize how it's a line and then find that x-intercept. So let me just head down here and write a few notes out. So if I had y equaling 3x plus 5 over 4, you might be thinking, hey, is this a rational function? Right? But it's not because there's no variable in the denominator. So only when there's a variable in the denominator can we say we actually have a rational function. And if you look at our denominator right now, it's just the number 4. So there's no variable down there which is again why I'm saying it's not a rational function. And when you have that number in the denominator, you're allowed to distribute it to the numerator. Oop, that's coming up a little funky. Let me undo that. Um, I can distribute the four to the numerator. And what that means, again, think back to your math days when you divide by four, which is what we're doing here. That's like multiplying by one fourth. So if I were to take one fourth to three X plus five, and distribute that 1 fourth, I'm looking at 3 fourths x plus 5 fourths, right? Or you can just think of it this way. Let me change pen colors as 3 fourths x plus 5 fourths, all right? Let me change pen colors back. But ultimately, this is a linear function, right? The slope is 3 fourths, and the y-intercept is the ordered pair 0 comma 5 fourths. Now, another thing that happens is anytime you want an x-intercept, if you want an x-intercept, the algebra for it is to let y equal 0. So if I do that, if I let 0 be equal to 3 fourths x plus 5 fourths, and again, the reason I'm choosing 0 is because we want to let y equal 0. If I do that now, I can solve for x. All right, I would subtract 5 fourths from both sides. Now, for me personally, I prefer when my variable is on the left side, so I'm going to write it this way, that 3 fourths x is equal to negative 5 fourths. And yes, those are ugly, but all I ultimately need to do is divide by 3 fourths on both sides to get my answer. So this cancels out, and if I scooch along here, I'm going to have x is equal to negative 5 fourths divided by 3 fourths which is like saying negative 5 fourths times the reciprocal 4 thirds, these cancel out, and I get negative 5 thirds. And that decimal is negative 1.667. So here, my x-intercept, sure enough, I algebraically got, oops, not a 0, I got negative 1.667 comma 0. All right, now I'm going to flip over to the graphing calculator and show you how I do it there. All right, I'll see you in just a bit. Bye. Hey, Math 31, I want to finish up section 2.1, number 53. So if we take a look at this, if we want to find our x-intercept, the first thing we want to do, if we want to use our graphing calculator, is go to your y equals screen and type in 3x plus 5 over 4. Now, since 3x plus 5 is in that numerator and it's a binomial, we want to protect it with parentheses. So I'm going to write 3x plus 5 in parentheses and divide it by 4. You also... If you wanted to do it this way, you could have written 3 fourths x plus 5 fourths. So either way you write it, those are equivalent statements. But I probably, just because I'm a little on the lazy side, would probably write it the first way just because it's fewer things to type in. So I'm going to clear this one out, but just know you can write it that way. Now since we're on a math problem, we're going to hit zoom 6. So while we do the strictly math questions, we're going to do zoom 6. And in future chapters, we're going to get to stats questions, and we'll use Zoom 9. But here's, here's our line. And if I look at the y, and, or excuse me, the x-intercept, the x-intercept looks like it's, it's crossing here. So if this was negative 1 and this was like negative 3, right, it actually kind of looks like it's at negative 2 right now. I don't know that it hits exactly, but it, it's somewhere in here, and that's pretty close to negative 2. Now, if I want to calculate this with my calculator, your calculator does it. We're going to go into the calc function, and that's blue. So I'm going to hit second calc, and your calculator calls x-intercepts zeros. 
and they call them that because to find an x-intercept you want to let y equal zero and there's a connection between x-intercepts of a function and zeros of an equation. But let's hit option two and then you're going to get this left right thing popping up. Now you have a couple of options. I'm going to do the first way with blinky. That's not a technical term, that's my term. And then I'm going to do the second way with just a, a more efficient way of doing it. But here's blinky. So if I think my x-intercept is here and it needs a left bound, scoot blinky left till you're on the left side of that, right? So if my x-intercept is here, blinky is to the left of that x-intercept, and then hit enter, All right? Now it says go to the right. So if my x-intercept is here, I need to move blinky somewhere over in this direction. So I'm gonna move all the way to the right. That's far enough, so I'm gonna hit enter. And then all I have to do is just hit enter through guess. If I hit enter, there's my x-intercept. It's coming out at negative 1.667. All right, now let me show you what I, I consider a, a faster way. And if I can do it this way, I will. All right, so let me show you. I'm gonna do second calc. We're still gonna do option number two. Now, instead of moving blinky left and right and clicking on this left arrow and this right arrow a bunch, I'm just gonna put in x values that I think are to the left of this uh, x-intercept. So here's what I mean. If I think that x-intercept is around negative two, it, what is an x value definitely to the left of negative two? Well, this was negative one, negative two, negative three. Negative four is definitely to the left of it. All right, so I can enter in here negative four and hit enter. Now you could have entered negative five, negative six. You could have picked any x value to the left of wherever you're guessing this is. And then it's going to prompt me, hey, go to the right of it. Well, again, if I think this is negative two, and I'm moving along the number line and I want to go to the right, what's the next value to the right of that? Well, negative one is to the right, zero is to the right, one is to the right, two is to the right, three is to the right. I'll put three in, but I could have put any of those numbers. And you see these little triangles up here. So what your calculator is going to do is it's going to find the x-intercept between these two markers, right? This point on the graph and this point on the graph. I'm going to hit enter through guess, and there it is. So you've got a couple of ways to get these x-intercepts on your calculator. And again, as I showed before, you can also algebraically do it by hand. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.